Okay, so now it's time to add some more detail to this model inside X-Shape. Uh, this is probably my favorite part because I just get to run wild and I'm gonna warn you, it's a little chaotic and I'm a little reckless with the tools. So uh, let's jump into it and, and get, get to modeling. So what's really cool about adding a subdivisional surface is I can subdivide one surface or many surfaces like I did right here for the mouth. And it just gives me more data to work with, okay? So I got more points to pull, I got more edges to rotate and scale and more surfaces too. So I just did a quick selection around where I think the mouth should be and then I dropped an extrude feature right on it and just hit check on that and and right away you can see I extruded like these lips, but I have this one surface kind of sticking out. Instead of doing a control Z and starting over, I just kind of relax the surface, you know, do a non-uniform scale right there, pull it down and just start tucking these surfaces where they need to go. I don't think you had used that before, that extrude, but that was pretty cool. So you, you selected them all and then added extrude and it just kind of bumped them out. Yeah, man. it's. It's what I refer to as virtual clay. You know, okay. you see it, you can manipulate it, and, and you can change it. So uh, I just, I love at the same time, there's these constraints so I can do it a certain amount and exactly how I need to get it done. Yeah, also really, really fascinating when you can push and pull and when you had to relax that surface to, you know, sort of fix that, that folding on itself or sticking out there, you're actually working on the, again, that clay-like model. That's right. So to add a little bit more character to this, I, I just went ahead and I changed the, the color of the eyeball. Um, it just helps when you're, you know, you're modeling the eye socket and eyelids and things like that. So I did that. And now I'm just going to smack another box in here. Okay. So, so what's this, what's this box going to be? Watch how fast I turn a box into a tooth, right? Okay. It's just a, it's just a real quick couple of quick pulls. Just a scale feature here, uh, non-uniform, kicking it out, ripped up the top. So it's got a little bit of point, it scaled it out. It's got a little body to it. If that doesn't look like a Megalodon tooth, I don't know what does. But you know what? It started with a box. All right, you sold me. And this was really cool uh, that, that I recently found out about inside X-Shape. I can just copy and paste elements. So I modeled up one tooth. Instead of modeling another one or doing anything crazy, I just control C, control V, and bam, I had I had more teeth to, to push around, scale, and manipulate, and just kind of make it look like an angry set of teeth right here. Now, once you copied and pasted, though, you can make changes to those new copies, and they're all different, right? So you just kind of tweak them the way you want. Nice. That's That's true. That's definitely true. That's exactly what I did. And you know what? Just when you think I couldn't quite possibly use another box, bam, there's another box, right? So this one's gonna be a dorsal fin, okay? <laughs> At this point, I have no doubt that it's gonna make the perfect dorsal fin. That's right, that's right. Actually, I mean, I've, I've, we're joking around about it, but I've actually heard all the, like, all the experts that, that are good at X shape say the same thing. It's like, use a box most of the time to get started, basically, it gives you the most flexibility and um, it's got all the starting points for faces, loops, and vertices. So that's that's really one of the big pro tips right here. Right. And another thing is watch how fast it becomes not a box just by, you know, doing a, a, a non-uniform scale in, in one direction, just by scaling these in just a little bit. Look how skinny it is, you know? You would never picture that as a box, right? And I, I just by adding edge loops where I need them and sometimes selecting just vertices, sometimes just the edges. And like right here, I select all these surfaces and just drag them around, you know, and it just instantly updates. And a lot of times with this, it's just trial and error. It's like, does this look like a fin? Maybe, maybe I need to subtract some of these faces. Maybe it's a little bit too heavy, you know? So I, yeah, just repeated pretty much that, yeah. that same process. I. I, I took the fin, I copied it to the back, I manipulated it a little bit, I rotated it, scaled it down, tucked it in there, and I was like, you know what? Why not throw three dorsal fins on the back just to make this guy look cool? Well, that's but, that's what I was wanting to see right there. I mean, you got the teeth, you got that mean look. It's 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 really looking awesome. Um, it's really, I mean, for real, it's starting to come together. 
Yeah, for sure. So I guess like the next video, maybe you could show me how to, you know, update this with that SOLIDWORKS file that I have so that it has the wiggle waggle to it, you know? Yeah, I mean, you've got it looking awesome. I mean, you've got the teeth and the mean look that, that we were talking about with that original sketch. It's really starting to come together. But yes, we can totally, we'll bring this model back into SOLIDWORKS and let's see how it does the updates. It's really quick, really easy. I'll show you how to do that. Awesome.